Welcome to The Checkup. I'm Modern Healthcare's Managing Editor, Erica Teichert. As the COVID-19 pandemic enters its third year, health systems are hopeful that a new normal is on the horizon. Now we have vaccines, rapid testing, and new treatments for the virus. COVID-19 may be shifting from a pandemic to an endemic situation, which could change healthcare and public health operations. Already, the CDC and states have shifted guidance for mask mandates. But the endemic shift comes with its own challenges. Some healthcare workers have left the industry for good, and approximately two-thirds of Americans are vaccinated against COVID-19, less than the 70% goal set by the Biden administration. Joining me to discuss how hospitals are preparing for the next phase of COVID-19 is Mike Slabowski, CEO of Trinity Health. Welcome to the checkup, Mike. Great to be with you, Erica. How would you say the pandemic has most affected Trinity from a financial, operational, or staffing perspective? Well, you know, I've described in a number of conversations I've had that we've really referred to the pandemic as a six-act drama. Um, you know, we had the first, you know, impact, and then the summer that looked like we had it under control and a bad winter, and then vaccines came out, and we thought we were on the mend, and then Delta and Omicron came along. So, you know, we really, um, up till recently, have been in what we call Act 5, um, which was, you know, the two surges, the, the variants, probably the worst impact of, of the pandemic. But we're now moving into what we call X6, and I'm calling it Emergence 2.0. So we're really focusing on how we move forward and transform our ministry to respond to the new world that we're facing. And, and it's not resurrecting the past. I mean, it's about, you know, there's been a change in people, both our, our we call our employees colleagues, this impact on our colleagues, the impact on services, the mix of services and how we provide those services. And then finally, the impact on the demand for value. So all those are true of our emergence uh, 2.0. And at what point would you consider COVID-19 to be endemic? Um, and tell me a bit about what Act 6 looks like for from Trinity's perspective. Sure. Well, I would start by saying, you know, that we've been fooled several times on when we thought we were going to move from pandemic to endemic. So while we we're very hopeful that we're moving into an endemic stage now, um, you know, the reality is uh, we have to be on guard for, uh, you know, new variants and what impact they might have on us. Yes, we have more treatment opportunities now and more testing opportunities. So, you know, I think we're, and we have medications for people who end up, you know, uh, seriously ill. So that's all hopeful. But as you said in your intro, you know, only 70% of folks are, are, you know, fully vaccinated. So anything could happen. When we talk about your second question is, what do I define as emergence 2.0? Um, we've really called out five or six things here at Trinity Health on Emergence 2.0. So the first is continuing to support communities as we shift from pandemic to endemic uh, through all this work. The second is supporting our colleagues, our, our employees, um, as you know, they've dealt with a lot during this period of time. And um, you know, turnover has gone up, people looking at different roles you know, across various industries, um, the work that's shifted uh, into hybrid work opportunities. So how we support our colleagues are really, really important. The third is, you know, doubling down on the patient slash member focus, treating people as members of our health system, keeping them safe, but also uh, really focusing on their needs. And our, our new brand promise is about listening, partnering, and making it easy. Um, and then the fourth is on growth. So, uh, you know, in fact, our board met last week and even amidst all the challenges, you know, approved um, over a billion dollars of new growth projects that we're focusing on to support our communities ac across the country, um, continuing to focus on operational excellence and then, you know, promoting what we're doing internally and externally and focusing on advocacy because we're definitely going to need more um, awareness and support uh, with federal, state, local government, not only uh, in preparation for other public health needs, 
But, you know, just to get through this situation as well with the colleagues, the employee turnover and and bringing people back to working in healthcare. So those are six things. To focus a little bit on the advocacy work that you're doing, you mentioned federal, state, and local. I'd love to hear more about the state and local efforts that you have. Uh, yeah. Well, I mean, at, at all levels, I mean, we have a, an advocacy staff that focuses on state as well as having folks out in our regional health ministries that work with, with uh, states and local. Our, and federal is the work that we do here at System Services. But um, you know, connecting with uh, our legislators on the challenges that we're facing, um, the focus on, on common good, the work we're doing on community health and well-being to support our communities. Trinity's made, you know, multi-million dollar investment in connecting clinical care to social care needs uh, of our people in the communities. We've also made a huge commitment to uh, diversity, equity, inclusion, and the elimination of systemic racism, starting here at home with uh, how we support our own our own colleagues. Um, but I think, you know, uh, with respect to to advocacy. Um, I had a real awakening last night after the president's speech because, you know, he said um, that, you know, one of the ways we're going to restore, you know, the future for America is uh, focusing on USA, on building jobs and bringing services and business back to the United States. Healthcare is the pinnacle of domestic labor and support we use. American products and services to support, you know, whether it's pharmaceuticals or, or uh, our medical supplies that we use, and and our labor is is all domestic. So we're all about supporting America, and we're looking for support from federal, state, and local levels to help us uh, through this uh, transition into Emergence 2.0. And I know you're also investing in programs like Hospital at Home and bringing that care directly to your patients. Is there going to be any shift in those initiatives as the pandemic moves towards endemic or we, we move on into the new normal? Well, I mean, Trinity has always had a large uh, role in home care, in uh, PACE. We're the second largest PACE provider in the country. Um, and in long-term care services as well. We do a ton of telehealth uh, with folks at home and we're advancing those initiatives at a very rapid pace as well. So we, we see home care as, as an area and programs like PACE as huge growth areas for us as we take care to home. And hospital at home is a component of that. And I know you also joined forces with 13 other health systems to create Truveta and use data to improve patient care. What made you decide to be a part of that effort? Sure. Well, you know, health systems like ours and others that joined uh, Truveta are really a treasure trove of clinical data as well as financial data that can be used for us to really understand at a very macro level the correlation between, you know, the care that we provide, the demographics of people that are served in, and the opportunities for best outcomes. So as you know, the model for Truveta is to save lives with data. And that's exactly what we think um, it's important to be part of a national effort like this, to be able to have the data, to be able to mine the data and to make, you know, a transformational changes in delivering the right care at the right time and using the right resources and, and also supporting people uh, as we honor diversity and, and the impact that that has on uh, health. Do you feel that the pandemic has made it easier to work with other health systems on efforts like this? I think the, health, the pandemic certainly has opened up the opportunity to think more broadly about things. So for example, um, we started um, actually before the pandemic at our own nursing agency called First Choice. We have 2,000 nurses that are in First Choice that are deployed to our communities. Uh, it was a way for us to um, recruit nurses that otherwise would have left the field to still stay part of the family and they're familiar with our care processes, but yet, you know, have them aboard to support us uh, nationally. 
And um, I've had some conversations with some other health systems about, you know, is there an opportunity for us to leverage that nationally um, and others coming aboard and creating a national agency for nurse support by way of example. So there's a lot of discussions going on about opportunities like that right now. Well, that's a really interesting way of trying to improve retention, especially as workforce shortages are going on. Are there other ways that Trinity is trying to retain staff or help them find uh, find jobs in different areas of Trinity than they might have been otherwise? Sure. Through this whole pandemic, we have created eight emergence teams, and those teams have included people at our regional health ministries and system services that have focused on addressing specific problems or issues. So for example, at the beginning of the pandemic, we had a group that focused on how to create safe outpatient environments uh, for people once, you know, when we were living through the pandemic. We have three teams, uh, team six, seven, and eight that have been focused on culture, on safety, and then team eight has been focused on how colleague recruitment, retention, engagement, uh, and resilience. And there have been a number of initiatives all the way from new care models uh, to how we can provide incentives for people to stay aligned with us, as well as getting support for mind, body, spirit needs that they have as they and their families have dealt with this pandemic. Um, doing things like, you know, eliminating the waiting period for new colleagues on their health insurance, they getting it day one when they start uh, working with us. So there's a whole range of activities that we've taken on around uh, supporting our colleagues to recruit and retain. And as we're hopefully reaching a new stage of the pandemic, I know we've said that previously, but what yeah. are the biggest challenges facing Trinity or health providers at large? Yeah. Well, clearly uh, the staffing challenge is, is big. And everyone I talk to has experienced the same uh, great resignation um, or people, you know, moving into different roles entirely outside of the organization. So really regaining the trust of uh, the colleagues who have stuck with us all this time, um, as well as recruiting new people and going through all the cultural, you know, development to make sure that they're aligned with our mission, vision, values. Is, is a number one challenge on a going forward basis. I think the second is what I talked about earlier, which is how do we respond to the new environment, new services that we need to be providing? How do we deliver value? You know, Trinity Health is one of the nation's leaders on uh, supporting um, population health and taking responsibility for total cost of care and outcomes. And so we're really expanding uh, that work across our ministries. We have a Medicare Advantage plan that is now in uh, six states uh, across the nation. So a lot of those things are taking us to the next level. Well, thank you so much for joining me, Mike. Yeah, great to be with you. And thank you for watching the checkup.